Hello everyone, this is Robert, and these are a bunch of different air pumps. As laser engravers become more popular, I've been seeing stuff like this pop up, and the question is, is this worth the 80 or 90 dollars, or are there better options? So that's exactly what I'm going to try and figure out in this video. I've got a couple other options to test, so let's do it. So as always, be sure to check out the chapters down below so that you can kind of skip around and find the section that is most relevant for what you're looking for. So I think we got to start out with why air assist. Air assist basically blow air right down at the bottom of the nozzle so that when you're cutting something with your laser, the debris can kind of go away from it and you're not just recutting the debris. It's mostly useful for deeper cutting or some fine engraving. It also helps with kind of that charred surface on the top. So air assist is nice. Um, it's kind of always essential for just about whatever you're cutting or engraving. And that's why stuff like this exists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of compare these three different options. I have a PSI meter here so we can measure. This only goes up to 10 PSI, but this one already has its own uh, regulator and gauge on it. And then we can also test air flow, how much um, air is actually coming out in terms of air flow. And then I also have my kilowatt meter so we can measure the power. And then we're also going to see how loud each one of these is. Now, for every single application, the amount of PSI or, you know, whatever measurement you want, the amount of pressure and the amount of airflow is going to ultimately vary. So you're probably going to want to have something like a needle valve or some sort of adjustment to be able to adjust that. But these are really cheap and they can work with any of these options. So what I'm really focused on is kind of the maximum specs. What's the maximum amount of PSI you can get? What's the maximum amount of airflow? Because you can always go down from there, but you're not really gonna be able to go up from there. So uh, yeah, let's um, look at the three candidates and then go from there. So the first candidate is this laser air assist, which is clearly printed right on the top. This came with the Ortur Laser Master 3 when I got it for review a couple weeks ago. And this thing is odd. It feels very insubstantial. It doesn't really weigh a whole lot and it's very lightweight. You've got a little nipple output on the end. You've got an adjustment knob here and then a DC input. It's Pretty simple and uh, really, really simplistic. Next up, we've got one of these. These are aquarium pumps. I actually use something like this on my big CO2 laser, and I want to see if that is the right thing to use. Maybe it's not. These are used for kind of um, bubbling air in aquariums, and they usually have a much higher flow rate, but a little bit lower PSI. So that's what we're going to kind of test. And unfortunately, this one only has this little hose. I didn't have a fitting for this, so we're going to have to go through the manifold, but I found that this didn't really um, affect the pressure or the flow that much. So just something to keep in mind. And this one runs off of AC, so you just plug this directly in and there's no adjustment on it. Then lastly, we've got the good old airbrush compressor. These are really handy. I use one of these on one of my CNC machines for uh, air cooling and also some of the pneumatics on the machine. And the interesting thing about this is that it actually has a bit of a tank and then you have a regulator built on. So where this one kind of has like a power adjustment, this one just kind of runs, then you can build up the tank to a certain PSI. So this one will be very interesting, and of course this runs directly on AC. So uh, let's start out with the airflow test. We'll get this guy out and see what the airflow is on each one of these. I've got my little wind meter sensor here, so we're going to be measuring each one of these in meters per second. Let's start with the air assist since I already have that plugged in. Yeah, so let's call that 1.5 meters per second. Next up, let's do the aquarium pump. And this one's a little bit interesting because it has this manifold, but that's not a big deal. I did test this off camera and the manifold doesn't have any issue with airflow or with actual pressure, so should be fine.
So it looks like about 0.92. Yeah, maybe 9.4. Let's go 9.4. And lastly, we'll do the airbrush compressor. This one's a little bit interesting because it has this hose on. It has a different fitting, but I've adapted it to a little push fitting right there. So it should be fine. So let's say 1.2. So interesting, the uh, laser air assist, I guess, wins that round. So now let's measure the pressure with this little digital pressure gauge. This goes up to about 15 PSI. We'll see if that's enough. If not, I'll figure something else out. Once again, using the same tubing on everything. So starting out with the laser air assist. And I'm always using this at max just to make it easy. Got to plug it in. And this will be in PSI. So 14.34 PSI. Kind of interesting, relatively high. Okay, let's go to the uh, aquarium pump. Three point seven two psi, so significantly lower. So the airbrush compressor is a bit unique in this test. Um, it will easily max out that little digital gauge and it has its own pressure regulator here on top. This goes up to, what is that, 150 PSI. I'm not sure how much this can actually get up to, but let me just try plugging the end and just seeing how high we can get it with just my finger over it. But this is gonna go way, way higher than the others are even capable of. has a switch that cuts it off at about 80 PSI. So yeah, this is gonna go much, much, much higher. So this clearly wins by a massive margin. I guess I should mention about this because it might not be obvious to everyone. This is fully adjustable. So this little knob right here, you can kind of press it pull it out and adjust it. So I don't have a good way of like permanently plugging this um, to show you, but you can adjust this from pretty much anywhere in this range, which makes it kind of convenient because you, if you want this to be five or 10 PSI, you absolutely can just dial this in to adjust it. So this has a nice adjustable range and you can get pretty much any PSI you want out of it for the purposes of laser cutting. So the last and final thing that we have to test is the power consumption and the sound level. I've got an SPL meter here on my phone. I'll just kind of test that off camera. And so yeah, let's start out with the laser air assist. We'll go at max. And we're about 10 watts. And if I plug it, yeah, I go up to about 13 or so. And we're looking at about 60 decibels. Yeah, right around about 60 decibels. Let's go to the aquarium pump. So we're about 19 watts. Let's see if I plug it. maybe like 20, somewhere around there. And it's about 62 decibels. 
It sounds a lot louder than the other one, but it's technically only about two decibels louder. Now, the airbrush compressor. Oh, zero watts. Ah. It's about 66 watts, so significantly more power. It's about 62 decibels, so it's kind of about the same if I plug it. Oh yeah. So it's a lot quieter when it's plugged. I think just the air is making a lot of noise. So I'm going to try this once again, just with this. Yeah, 60 watts. I was power hungry. about 60. So I would say you're probably between 60 and 62 uh, decibels for the sound. So the Air Assist is definitely the quietest, um, which yeah isn't too surprising. It is relatively quiet. It's about on the same level as this. I think both of these kind of side by side, let's plug these back in. Side by side, they sound kind of similarly annoying. Uh, they're not really that much different from one another. So it kind of has more of like a hum and annoyance to it. No, no. They just kind of have a bit of a different tone overall to them. I'd say this one definitely seems quieter. And then we have the aquarium pump, which is probably the noisiest and the most annoying. Yeah. And then we're sitting at about, yeah, what is it, like 21 watts. This is 10 to 12 watts. And then big boy over here is about 60 to 70 watts. And I think you could probably see this easily peaking up to 80 or maybe even 100 watts um, if you start pressurizing a lot. So kind of interesting. It's conclusion time. There's not really a um, clear winner. I think there's a clear loser. I think the aquarium pump is the clear loser. It has the least amount of airflow. It has the least PSI. It's got the best price at 30 bucks. It's really not that bad. Now you might be saying, Robert, they make much bigger ones of these. Well, I do have a much bigger one right over there on my big CO2 laser. And the PSI is the same, but you get a lot much more airflow out of it. So I'm not really sure that's the right benefit. And mine was a little bit over $100. So I think I'm going to end up replacing it. And I'm not really sure which one I would end up going with. Uh, probably something like this. But I think for most purposes, this is probably the not the right thing to do. It's the loudest. It's the most annoying. You get 20 watts power consumption for very little um, actual airflow that you need. So let's get rid of that one. Between these two, it's really a toss up. This guy's about $90. It is a nice kind of simple, small form factor. It's a little bit easier to fit on your desk. Not that this is you know crazy big or anything. It does have an adjustment, which we didn't really talk about the adjustment. Let's talk about that real quick. The adjustment is kind of weird on this because the range is, well, I'll just show you. So that's off. That's on. That's a little bit more. There's nothing coming out of this. It doesn't really do anything until you get to about half. And then it kind of ramps up. It's kind of oddly exponential. And I don't really know what I'm getting across with this, but the, the adjustment really isn't what I would ever expect. I would probably just have it at max all the time. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to have this be adjustable. So that isn't really a big feature of it. The low power is nice, I guess, if you care about that. But let's be honest, we're sitting there like burning wood. I don't know if I'm going to be really worrying about an extra, you know, 10, 20 watts or 40, 60 watts of difference between them. However, this does come with a nice little attachment for the laser. 
a lot of the new laser engravers are coming with these nozzles already on there. They already have fittings, so I'm not sure how much of a benefit that is, but this is specifically made for lasers, and it really does seem very well suited. The PSI range is in about the right PSI range. The airflow is higher than this one, so it does kind of seem well suited. However, it is a bit of a one-trick pony, and it only really does the one thing. The airbrush compressor is a whole nother animal because you can get much higher pressure out of it. Now, that being said, I'm not really sure because this is a, um, an open system. You're not actually pressurizing a tank and you're not gonna be using 90 PSI out of this, right? Because you're just gonna be spitting it out of the hose. So something to keep in mind. But I kinda do like just the build and the quality of this in comparison with this just kind of cheap little plastic thing. This just doesn't feel like $90. It does the job perfectly fine, but it just doesn't feel like the money. This thing really does feel like the money. However, it's a power hog. You're talking about 60 to 100 watts. You do have some adjustability and some other stuff, but it seems maybe, maybe a bit overkill. So I don't know, this is a tough one. I think for my purposes, for my CO2 laser, I'm gonna swap out my aquarium pump thing that I have in there. And I think I'm gonna throw this in there. I think this would be a better fit for that. But if you're looking at something like this, keep in mind, it doesn't have like the little laser attachment. You're gonna have to buy some fittings. You're gonna have to buy some tubing. You're gonna have to get more stuff because this isn't made for lasers. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. But this at $70, links down below, versus this at $90, I think it's a tie. I think it really is a tie. This is made more for lasers and is gonna be more of that one trick pony that's better for that purpose. This is gonna be more versatile because you can legitimately charge this up and hook it up to oh, like a brad nailer or something like that, or like a little air hose. You can inflate tires. You know, this is a lot more versatile overall, but this is a bit quieter. This is a bit more power efficient. Ah. You figure it out. I've got links down below for everything so you can kind of uh, make your decisions, but I think I'm gonna end up going with um, this because it just kind of suits my needs better. But you know what? This surprised me. This is actually a decent little piece of kit. I still think it's overpriced. I still think $90 for this is just insane, but it does the thing and it gets the job done. So yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you got a little bit something out of this. I know I got something out of this. So uh, yeah, as always, check me out in the next videos. Check out all the links below and see you then.